A good morning. It's a Friday morning. Uh, time to build some stuff. Uh, just as a sort of programming note, I am hoping to do more of these live builds here on the YouTube channel and also on Twitch. These these are on both at the same time. Um, and typically, I think that from at least for a while now, they're going to be on Friday mornings because that just turns out to be the time that I have available to carve out of my schedule. So. Um, yeah, we'll get right into it because I don't have a ton of time today, but um, the plan is to build the arms and legs that will go on to this guy here. Let me get you a closer view of the thing that we finished building last time, right? So we built this age one normal on the last stream. Uh, it has arms and legs too, I've taken them off uh, here because what we're building is the Gundam Base Limited Clear Color Kit that um, actually builds all three variations of the Gundam Age 1. So today is the Spallow, um, and I've got the parts over here ready to go. And so uh, what we actually have to build are just the arms and legs, right? Because the three variations of the Age 1, um, the Normal, the Spallow, and the Titus, all basically have the same torso. And so what they gave us in the kit is just parts for a single copy of the torso, and then we have to swap out the arms and the legs. So we can't have all three variations displayed at the same time. Um, we can pick, pick and choose which one we want to have at any moment in time. So today, um, it's going to be the Spallow, and it's going to be these parts here, which I've got prepared and ready to go. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's going to take that long to just build the arms and legs of this guy. Before I do that though, um, I wanted to answer a question from the last stream that somebody left in the YouTube comments um, asking about how I prepared these parts. And so there are two kind of different things, right? There's the clear parts and then there's these inner frame parts. And so um, I thought that just to start today's stream, I would talk really quickly through all of the prep and painting that went into getting these parts ready to go. Um, and so we'll start with the clear ones, the transparent parts, uh, just because it was a simpler process for these. Right, they're already transparent like this, obviously, on the runners. And so um, all that really had to be done was that they needed to be trimmed off the runner and nubs sanded and then painted a little bit uh, with some uh, gloss top coat. So what I did um, is I cut these things off of the runner and to remove the nubs, I've been using a glass file like this, right? Um, rather than sandpaper, because uh, if you're careful with a glass file, you can shave those nubs down to perfectly smooth, and you don't blemish the surface of the of the clear part. Um, I suppose if you use sandpaper, you could then sand with you know, increasingly high grits and try to polish it and get it looking just as, as smooth and good as it was originally. Uh, that would be a lot of work, I think. So. A glass file for me is the better better approach there, and then um, I just hit them with this Gaia Notes um, gloss clear, and that's probably unnecessary. They were already really transparent and shiny. Um, I think that especially for these white ones, which are kind of a milky clear, um, that hitting them with that gloss coat actually does make them look a little bit more transparent and um, just a little bit better overall. So I'm happy with that. Um, I'm trying not to mess up. They're all sorted here in the thing. Um, so yeah, that was that was the treatment for those parts. And then these inner frame parts, um, I did a bit more treatment on them because I knew that they were gonna be showing through the armor. And so uh, what I did with these is uh, I cut them off the runners, of course, uh, sanded down the nubs, and then I hit them with a coat of Surfacer. I used this this time. Um, it's Mr. Finishing Surfacer, and I used the black variety. Um, typically, when I paint metallics, I paint them on top of a gloss black coat. That uh, Surfacer is a matte black, um, and I decided to try that this time, and I don't think that it changed the metallic finish much at all. So that's good. Um, and then after that surfacer coat, I hit them with this Gaia Note Starbright Iron. Um, and you can tell here in the bottle, there's almost none left. The reason for picking this particular metallic is that I looked through my uh, used paint shelf and I found the bottle that I thought had enough to be able to, to do the inner frame for all three variations of the Gundam. It was a lot of parts. 
um, and I just barely had enough. I've painted all of the parts for the, the Titus that you haven't seen as well yet. Um, I painted those too, and, and uh, yeah, there's just traces left in the bottom of this bottle. So it was just barely enough. Um, and actually, I have those parts. Let me grab one. So here's an example um, of what that looks like, right? Um, just painted with the Starbright iron, uh, and we'll compare with maybe a similar type of part for this spallow. So this is the additional processing I did after this paint job to turn it into this. Um, was a bunch of just hand painting with uh, some enamel paints. So I've got, uh, you'll notice as we build through here, there's little bits of color and, and pop in some of these parts. Um, there's a gold, there's a copper, um, there's a metallic red and a metallic blue that all got um, painted as little details here and there on some of these parts. Um, and I just do that with a toothpick, actually, instead of a paintbrush, because I find that that's actually really good for doing tiny, tiny details. Just dip the toothpick in the end of the, or the end of the toothpick, just barely in the paint, and then just touch it on the spots you need, uh, kind of spread it around. That works really, really well. And then after that, um, I dry brushed everything with uh, just like a silver um, enamel paint like this. So that's just a flat brush, looks like so, right? Um, dipped in the paint and then brushed onto a paper towel to get most of the paint off and then just uh, kind of gently brushing it over the top to create a little bit of texture and to hit all of the edges to pull them out and you can see it lightens up the the, te the color overall of the part as well because this this thing started out looking this color um, so that is how we got to where we are um, with all of these and then I hit them again with a with the same gloss clear Just to seal all of that work in so that it doesn't smudge and um, You know get messed up by my fingers as we work on everything else um, Yeah, so hope that answers the question about uh, preparing all of these parts and uh, We'll just move on move on and start the build at this point. I think and we can skip here in the instructions all of the torso and the head. So the interesting thing about this kit is they gave you all three instruction manuals. Um, so for all three variations of the Age One, these are just the original instructions that came with the uh, Master Grade kits because it was you know at one point three separate Master Grade kits. And so, um, but the the part for the head and the torso and the waist unit are all the same. And so we can just skip ahead because we've already got those built here um, to this section where we're building the arms. I'll get you a little bit closer view, I think. And we will get started. Assuming that I've sorted these parts correctly in these bins, this should be all we need for one arm. One thing that I wasn't super happy with, it's not, that's not fair um, to say not super happy. Like the, the age one normal version of this, it looks fine. Um, I'm not a fan of the clear white plastic that they used, um, this sort of milky look. And so like the arms and legs, right, here's one of the legs. Hello, hello. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how the frame parts turned out. Um, yeah, so here's one of the legs for the, the Age One Normal that we built last time. And all this white, like, the inner frame doesn't show through it as much as I would like. I think I would have liked, like, an actual transparent, just completely clear. Um, I think that would have looked better. But anyway, the cool thing about the, the Spallow and the Titus is that they almost have no additional white parts. They're mostly, like the, the Titus is all red and we'll, we'll build that one next time, hopefully. Uh, maybe next week if I can get the parts prepped. Um, but this, this Spallow is mostly blue with a little bit of this transparent black, which we haven't seen yet. Um, and I think it looks really good. So we'll see how this looks once we get it put together with the rest of the parts. 
Um, yeah. So I think it's gonna be good. And I think when we finish all three versions, I'm likely to display this thing in its tightest form most often. Um, maybe the Spallow as well, but I don't think we'll ever see the Age One Normal variant like all, all assembled again because I just don't like it as much. I'm gonna try to keep my hands very clean. That's the other thing I didn't mention. Um, after I finish cutting and uh, sanding these parts, I wash them in uh, like just a little couple drops of dish soap and water. And after that point, I try to never handle them with my fingers um, during the entire painting process. I always wear gloves. And so this is the first time I'm touching these parts with my fingers for this assembly. I, we tried to assemble with gloves last time and it, it was tricky. So I decided just I'll just keep my hands very clean. Um, I tend to have oily fingers, so I don't want to get fingerprints all over everything. But uh, yeah, this should be fine. I'm checking to see if our music stopped or if it just uh, is in between songs or something. There we go. All right. So. The other weird thing um, with these, processing these inner frame parts, like when I did the dry brushing and stuff, I typically only do like one side of parts, especially like if you know that like this part here, for example, is going to, this part, this side's gonna be visible. This side here is gonna be covered by this part. No, it's actually this side that's gonna be covered by this part. Um, and typically, like when you're painting an inner frame, you can ignore that because you know that this opaque, uh, you know, outer armor part is going to cover it. But in this case, you know, it's going to show through. So I had to be careful with these inner frame parts to make sure I did like processing treatment on both sides with like the dry brushing and paying attention to how things look uh, because you never know what part is going to actually show up. This goes this way. Yeah, I do like this blue a lot. Let's actually zoom in a bit more. This has been my first time as well building a clear kit. Um, it'll probably be my last time building a clear kit. I haven't like hated the process or anything, but um, because I like painting and scribing and uh, all of those kinds of things, I think that uh, Clear kits like this just don't lend themselves to like the types of detailing that I like to do um, on kits. And so I probably won't do them very often in the future. Let's grab some nippers. So this thing does still have some poly caps, which we will have to grab from time to time as needed here. And I didn't try to do any uh, painting or other work on the polycaps. It's, in my experience, typically not worthwhile to even try because paint flakes off of them and typically they're hidden enough in a final build that you don't really see them too much anyway.
if I'm pausing while I assemble these things, it's because I'm just taking a look after I get the parts put together to see like how they're fitting and also what's visible and what's not. Um, because typically I snap build a kit before I do the final assembly. However, this time I um, didn't do any snap building. So all of this is me seeing these parts going together for the first time. And I'm trying to pay attention to like whether I missed or made bad mis uh, made bad decisions while I was doing some of the painting and other work on these parts, based on how they ended up fitting together. I did, and I always do, um, look at the instructions a lot to sort of see how things are fitting together and make certain judgments about how I think things are going. You know, what's going to be visible, what's not, stuff like that. Um, so I'm basically double checking at this moment to see if I was right with some of those assumptions. Hey, welcome. Um, so, technical difficulties. Um, we have a chatter on YouTube, and that's not showing up right there. It should. Um, so that's something I'll have to look into in the future. But so sorry for that. But yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and thanks for liking my gunplay content. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, I'm here like looking for try to figure to try to figure out what's going on with this piece that I can't attach and it's because I skipped a step earlier. So let's go back and resolve that issue. Yeah, so over on YouTube, things are a bit weird for me. Like, I haven't decided. Uh, I have one channel on YouTube, but I post a lot of 3D printing related videos over there. Um, and then I also, you know, post these Gunpla related things as well. And um, I realize that some of the subscribers over there are probably more interested in one of those subjects than the other. And so, I don't know, maybe it should have been two channels. I'm gonna leave it as one for now and see how things go because I don't wanna change stuff. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of over time, like who cares more about Gunpla, who cares more about 3D printing. I try to do sort of crossover things between the two subjects when I can. So I think that'll help. But, I'm for sure still like figuring out what makes sense content wise on each of the platforms and uh, you know, what do I want to live stream? What do I want to make into a video? That kind of stuff as well. So some of that will be evolving as time goes by here, I think.
All right, I think technically here we have the wrong, um, these two parts here are the wrong arm. Like we should have the opposite side. So let me go find those real quick. And we'll set these to the side for the next arm. It always makes me a little sad when I build an older master grade kit, like this one. And um, so this is the opposite shoulder as well. You know what, I probably just pulled the wrong, uh, the wrong thing out here. Okay. All right, so with that, we should have the, the correct pieces for the right arm. Let's do this first. Yeah. So these go together like this, and this is gonna go in here with the elbow joint facing that way. Yeah, so I'm definitely a fan of the more modern master grades that have um, no or almost no poly caps. Let's see, the longer, so this isn't, um, this piece here isn't the same front to back, so this is the back of the arm here, where there's a little bit uh, less clearance. And there's our arm, right? So this is gonna go down over the top here for the shoulder. Hey, good morning. You got here just in time for one arm? Um, oh, <laughs> and for me to figure out what to do about hands. So, here's the story with hands. I uh, trimmed all of the parts for the hands and the fingers for all three variations and painted them all together, like when we did the, the age one normal painting back uh, several weeks ago. And so in this bin, I have all the parts for the hands and I have these, you know, these are obviously the tightest hands. They're very, very big. Um, and so the hands we need here are probably gonna be the small ones, right? But I've gotta sort these out here real quick and figure out which ones we need. So these, not that, not that. 
Probably not those. Yeah, so in the last uh, stream, which was a couple weeks ago, we actually built the entire um, age one normal. So this guy here had arms and legs, and they've been now taken off um, because the other two versions that you can build with this kit reuse the same main torso, right? So I need to, uh, I set this, the arms and legs aside and I need to reuse that part for the Spallow that we're building today, which technically is just arms and legs only, and then we'll just put them on the existing torso and uh, should be good to go. This is really strange. So his closed fist, I don't know if you can see these parts, they're very small. Um, this is two fingers <laughs> of the closed fist, and then there's another part with the other two fingers and somewhere there are, should be two more for the two, four fingers of the other hand. So to actually make the closed fists of this guy, you end up making, or you end up putting together pairs of fingers. This thumb doesn't look like it's correctly seated, this little joint here. I don't want to break it, but it looks like there's maybe a tiny bit of plastic or something in that joint that's causing it to not fit together correctly. Finish that HG Galgu. Nice, so you've been busy too then. I see, I think, I think I see what the problem is here. I think that these are swapped. This one's supposed to go here. Yeah. We put these thumbs together the last time just because I was trying to figure out what parts I needed for the hands of the age one normal variation. Yeah. And I, I swapped those around. That fits much better. All right, we're gonna set all these fingers to the side and we're gonna grab, let's see, just like these. Set that to the side for the other hand. You hit affiliate yesterday? Nice. Congrats. I actually got um, the first set of criteria completed to uh, for the YouTube um, partner program just like earlier this week. Maybe it was last week. So I'm excited about that. So if you're watching on YouTube, most people don't watch these streams live on YouTube, they watch later. So if you're watching the replay of this on YouTube later on, thank you. If you've been one of the subscribers over there. All right, how do I figure out which of these fingers are the correct ones? So these two are the bigger fingers. And these two are the smaller ones. And this one must go here. Right? Wrong. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's right. Yes, and let's see, let's be you. Nope, that's definitely backwards. That doesn't look like how a hand should look.
Let's swap them like so. Yeah, there we go. And I guess the weird reason for is some work growing a channel. Yeah, um, I'm not really trying. Um, like my goal isn't to grow the channel. My goal is to, you know, build stuff and put out videos from time to time when I feel like it. Um, so it's not like a huge like goal of mine, but it's always nice when accidentally, um, you know, you have some success. So, um, yeah. So the weird thing with these is you can also do like, um, open fingers, right? You can swap these pairs of closed fingers out with pairs of open fingers. So you can make like different hand poses, I guess is the idea. It's very strange. Anyway, we're gonna set these, these straight fingers to the side and just use the fists for now. So here we go. Should we put this on here and see what it looks like? The shoulder seems a little bit loose, probably just because I haven't sandwiched it in there good yet. Yeah, that's better. So one arm, I definitely like the, the transparent black here. It probably doesn't show up well on camera with like the shiny or the reflections from the lights, um, but you can still see through it. It's like quite a smoky uh, dark gray, but you can still see through it to everything underneath if you look closely, which is cool. All right, and I'm seeing some fingerprints. So let's keep my hands clean. And let's build the other arm. Should I do so without my, uh, without instructions? I think we did that with one of the legs last time. Is that everything? No. Just one little piece. There we go. And we need these I guess I didn't mess around with the motion of this too much either like you know obviously it has a nice 180 degree bend at the elbow but I think that some of these little fins here on the forearm kind of open up as well yeah so we can do like that which actually looks really nice. So I'm gonna leave him like that and straighten his arm back out. And now is maybe a good time to mention this part here, the sort of V-fin part that's also the front of the top of the head, at least on my version of this kit, really likes to fall off. So whenever I've, cause I had a photo session with this thing in its age one normal variation um, whenever I was moving things around, I was always in danger of knocking that part off. To the point where it got kind of annoying. All right, there we go. Other arm. Let's see what I can remember. So this goes here. Didn't it? Oh, but it goes the other way. Haha. <laughs> I'm 
Master grade, yeah, I, I agree. I think high grade kits in general are more solid because of fewer parts, right? That, yeah, that's probably true. But on the other hand, I really like all of the extra molded detail and stuff on Master Grade kits. So, and if you have space to display them, um, I think as far as shelf presence goes, they're better, right? Um, they just look bigger and nicer. I suppose I should have put the top piece on here first. And I should have put it on in the correct orientation as well. Really tall, narrow shoulders on this guy. We didn't mention that last time, but or on the last on the previous arm, but uh, yeah. No, that's gonna be backwards. This is gonna be correct. See, this is what happens when I build without instructions. We just end up like building things out of order, maybe putting pieces on backwards. This goes in here, right? And then like this part goes over the top of it, but only in one direction. Which direction is it? It's this way or this way? No, nope, this way. Kingslayer, hello, welcome. That's wrong. Let's do it this way. Have I ever watched Gundam Age? Yes, I have. Um... It is not my favorite of the Gundam anime series, but it was all right. Good or bad? I, I would say somewhere in between, right? I think that, um, so the first part, the, um, the part that uh, is, Um, the part that is, uh, like, the age one, right? Because the series is kind of in three parts, um, was was pretty good, right? Um, as far as the story and the and the action and stuff goes. As it went on, as it got to age two, age three, um, I was less interested. <laughs> You're right, though. They do look like ten-year-old kids. This is sad. We just broke a piece. Um, don't worry, I'll be able to fix it. Um, however, so the little C clamp here, right, that attaches on there for the movement of this fin just broke. So I will glue this, and if, if I'm careful with it in the future, it'll be fine. But for the moment, I'm going to set it off to the side 
and we're going to be without that part on the arm here. Sad. It'll be fine in the end once I fix it up, but for now, we'll go without. This is a left arm, so the shoulder goes this way. And we need a hand, which will be easier than last time because I've saved all these parts and set them aside already. So let's see. The outside of the hand is the red dot. Is that true? Or did I just build that other one backwards? I suppose we should find out. What do the instructions say? Yeah, the red dot goes on the outside. Okay, cool. So now I'm wondering if there's ever been another kit that Bandai made that has split fingers like this, where like the, the first two fingers are one piece and the other two fingers are a separate piece. This is the only one I've ever run into that's like this. There we go. Someone with more uh, experience with high grade kits than I have has answered. So yeah, cool. Now we know. Sad, it's missing this bit here. That's all right. So two arms down, two legs to go. Uh, but before we get there, maybe, there is actually, so there were some parts here for skirts. I think they're front skirts and side skirts only that are different between the two variations, right? So I think what happens is and we could actually refer to this. So this is the one other piece of instructions that came with this version of the kit. This is the special like addendum to the instructions, you know, which basically tells you for the Spallo, assemble these arm and leg parts and then here's what you swap out. Um, and then somewhere here, it's the same, I got the same stuff for the Titus. Oh, it's up here, right. 
Um, so this shows you how you get to the different variations. So yes, the um, we get different side skirts and slightly different front skirts as well on this variation. So let's just build those while I'm here because they look quite simple. Right, so we have these, and then we have to figure out what to take off from here. And I think the answer is definitely these side skirts. I think actually this whole part comes out, like this, this bit right here. See, this part stays. Just this part is what comes off. Because then if we put this in here, and that in there, and which side are you? Does it matter? They are not the same. Let's figure it out. Well, that was, that's going to be later on in the instructions, looking ahead. They are the same, according to the instructions. They didn't look the same to me. All right, so we've got like this piece here now, and we can put this back on here. And this like slots into here. These back skirts are very strange in how they go together, like that. fix this arm because it's still not seated all the way in correctly. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so I think in this variation, I guess we can verify with the photo on the front of the instructions. Yeah. The front skirt is just the yellow part. So whereas in the age one normal, it had this like white bit that sticks down below. The Spallow has these smaller front skirts. So we need this part here. Come on, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna set these both aside with the rest of the age one normal parts. And then this goes here. This goes here. This goes on here. So obviously when Bandai designed this kit, they knew they were gonna be making these variations because they designed this waist skirt area in such a way that you could swap those pieces out and reuse the yellow parts that are the tops of the fronts and the back skirts while swapping out kind of the bottom half of the skirts, which is interesting. It was weird when we put it together um, when we were building the, the original, the age one version here, or the normal version. Um, I thought that that type of construction was strange. And now we understand why they did it that way. All right, so those are the only changes to the torso for this variation of the kit. That right shoulder is still not happy. 
Alright, there we go. So now we can build legs. Maybe feet first? Yeah. Cosmic. Okay, so again, a YouTube chatter. Sorry that your uh, message is not appearing on the screen on the stream right over there. Um, something I will work out later. Where did I buy this kit? Um, it is a Gundam Base exclusive kit. And so, um, to my knowledge, you have to buy it at a Gundam Base store. Um, you know, or you can buy it like from a reseller online, but they're hugely expensive usually when you do that. Um, in my case, where I live in the United States, um, the Gundam base, uh, they did like a pop-up store that was traveling around the country and it came to a city that was pretty near to me. And so I drove over there and actually went looking for something different, but this is what I found. And I wanted to buy something while I was there. <laughs> because I didn't want to go all that way and not buy anything at all. So this is the one thing that I bought from the uh, Gundam Base pop-up store when it came close to where I live. And um, yeah, so that's where I got it. And like I said earlier, I usually don't build clear color kits. In fact, this is my first one that I've like actually tried to make it look good <laughs> rather than just putting it together. And um, I probably won't build very many more clear color kits in the future just because um, I enjoy being able to paint and detail the outer armor on kits. And you can't really do that too much with one of these. Kind of defeats the purpose, right? Zoom back in here. So this little vent detail here is on the bottom of the foot. I didn't really pay attention closely to how all of these parts fit together for the legs and feet as I was painting them. And I did not think that that's where this part was gonna go. Oh, we need another polycap. This one is maybe in danger of being visible. Like more visible than I would like. Let's see. Right, because it's going directly inside of this white piece here. I'm a little worried. Eh, yeah. Maybe that gets hidden inside of there. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, you can kind of see it up underneath here, but it's not terrible, I guess. I was about to build the second foot, then I realized the parts for it are still back there in the bins. So we won't do that right now, we'll do it later. That's a tight fit. That's probably okay, right? Because this is not a part that moves. Yeah, this doesn't need to shift up and down once it's together here. Okay, good. That was another thing when I, um, when you do this much painting, um, this many different layers to an inner frame, 
Of course, you gotta be careful not to add too many layers of paint and cause fit issues with your parts later on, right? So I tried to, um, even though I did, you know, a layer of primer, then a layer of base coat, and then some additional hand painting, and then top coating on all on top of all of that. I tried to be kind of light with my layers of, especially the primer and the base coat, to make sure that I was leaving myself with enough, um, you know, clearance on the surfaces of these parts for everything to fit together well and not to scratch the paint off later on. Am I missing a piece? Somewhere there are these, there are these little round cylindrical bits. Awesome. Where'd you go? Oh, it's in here. Okay. This little thing here is what I was looking for. So here's another spot where a clear part goes directly on top of a poly cap so it's not covered by like any sort of painted inner frame part. This one's also probably fine as far as not being too visible, so that's good. This is a weird, happy sounding song that has just come on in my ears. Not a fan? Try again, random music player. This must have a specific orientation that it wants to be, right? It's not the same both sides. Mm, maybe it is. That's not the right part. Let's try again. Yep, it's this one. I do like this transparent black plastic a lot. And the blue and the red has been real good too. We didn't get to see much of the red today because this variation doesn't have red. The Titus has so much clear red, that'll be next time. Uh, hopefully next week, if I can get those parts painted and prepped and ready to go in time. But yeah, tons and tons of clear red on that one, and it looks really good. All right, so this, um, 
this. This is not in frame. Here we go. So this part of the instructions here I'm gonna skip because, or at least I guess this part right here, because it is the hip joint, which I think we're supposed to reuse from the, the version we've already built because I don't have more parts for hip joints here. There's like right here on the back of this knee joint, if I can get the camera to focus, there's a blemish where I did not perfectly sand down a nub. Don't tell anyone, they won't notice. I realize I just told everyone, it's fine. I noticed that when I was painting um, and I was too lazy to go back and sand it down and fix it at that point. So I decided it would be fine like it was. Yeah, I'm now realizing I should have put this on first. Fortunately, those two parts come apart very easily. I'm actually a bit surprised at how um, how do I want to say it, like kind of chunky the design of this leg is, especially the upper part of the leg here. Um, I think of this version of the Gundam, this design being very sort of light and nimble, and yet um, this upper leg is you know, kind of round, more round and uh, less squared off than I would have expected it to be. This part here does not seem like it wants to connect well at both the top and the bottom. And I think that's partly because of the extra layers of paint. So let's just carefully do this. That's all right, cool. And these outer parts here that go on the sides of the thigh are not the same from the left to the right side. And I think I've, when I sorted them out, grabbed the wrong ones here because let's try this one and see if it fits better. Yes. All right. So these are for the left leg and these two here should be for the right leg. 
much better. Yeah. Actually, I wonder if, yeah, this piece here on the front of the leg is the same, like it's the same part number. So it's, it's the same from left to right. I was wondering if maybe I had the wrong one of these and that's why that fit right in here where my fingernail is did not seem correct, but it's actually fine. Yeah, it looks right. So I'm going to have to go find the legs for um, the age one normal. And we're going to have to grab the hip joints off of those because we need them here. but we can at least put the foot on this. There's our knee bend. This little bit here can fold out as well, kind of similar to the flaps that are on the backs of the arms. Oh, that little detail there that I painted blue actually shows through. That was another thing, like as I was painting detail on the inner frame, I wasn't, I was kind of paying attention to where the parts go, but I wasn't paying a ton of attention to like what parts were gonna be visible through, you know, exposed um, outside of the armor versus just visible through the clear plastic. So that was nice. All right, let me see if I can find the, sh the shoulder, no, the uh, hip joint. Here's our other two legs. Lengthwise, they're about the same, aren't they? Um, this guy's got smaller feet for sure, the Spallow. But yeah, I like the blue and black for sure compared to this milky transparent white. All right, so this is the hip we need for this side. And I'm gonna go, gonna go ahead and grab the one for the other side as well. And just set it off to the side here. So that's going to be an issue, I think. There's this part here. Let me let me sort of disassemble, and I'll show you. Well, I thought I was going to disassemble. There we go. Yeah, that's actually easier. I should have probably just left these hip pieces attached to the waist, um, the hip joints, and just pulled the legs off downward uh, when I disassembled it. The the age one version or the normal version, I mean. I keep calling it the age one. They're all age one. So this piece here, um, which just very loosely kind of sits on the top of the thigh there and has this little sort of outer piece that covers the side of the hip joint, um, this is gonna come off all the time because it's just sort of barely attached. And as you try to uh, move it around and attach the especially the hip joint onto the body of the Gundam, it's, yeah, it's gonna be an issue to not pop that piece out of place. So, being careful, there we go. Still not happy with the right shoulder. I might actually have to take the, this joint out of the, off of the torso there and tighten it up a bit. So 
side skirt. Go back. Right there, thank you. He does seem taller and thinner. We don't have the other leg yet, of course, but compared to the age one normal, this one seems taller and thinner. I think it's just an illusion. Obviously we can't like stand them up next to each other because I can't build them both at the same time <laughs> with this version of the kit um, because they only gave me the one torso. But um, yeah, he does look taller and thinner. So these are almost the last parts that we have here for this version of the Age One. There's actually one small little weapon section. We'll talk about that after I build this leg. But as far as weapons load out, the Spallow did not come with much. It has kind of a knife sort of thing. And that's it. That's not the right part. Let's try again. So um, one other thing about this build, I this is the first, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking to make sure that what I'm about to say is true. It is true. Um, this is the first kit that I will have built that was painted entirely in my new uh, spray booth that I built for myself. Um, it's 3D printed. I'm not sure anybody else has 3D printed the parts to build a spray booth before. Um, I posted a video on actually a couple videos on my YouTube channel about it. Um, but this latest version actually works quite well. And so this is, this was entirely painted in that new version of my spray booth. And, um, one cool thing about that setup, the new spray booth setup is that, um, it's more open and like, uh, I don't know, there's just there's better lighting and better view, viewing angle into the area where, I, where I'm actually working in that spray booth. And so I have a camera set up over there now um, that should, with any luck, do a pretty good job of capturing any work that I do in the spray booth. And so going forward in a future live stream, um, I do plan on probably live streaming some of my work over there rather than just here at this desk. Um, live streaming some of the work in the spray booth as well and I think I'll be able to get at least decent looking um, footage over there now which is nice so my plans are um, for future a future project probably the next big one um, that I do any live streaming of it's going to be um, a 
it's going to be a um, resin conversion kit. And there's going to be a lot of, of course, like prep work, sanding, painting, all of that fun stuff that you get to do when you, when you build a resin kit. Um, and so I'm hoping that I can capture some footage and stream some footage from um, over there in the spray booth working area as well as here at the desk. We'll see how that goes. But that'll be coming up after this one's done. Like after this one and after the age one Titus, which is kind of the final step of this. That'd be awesome. Cool. Yeah. And certainly, you know, I only want to stream stuff that you guys find interesting. Like I've always kind of had in my head that I'm not sure that just like watching somebody paint in silence, um, right? Because I'll have like a, a respirator mask on that I wear when I paint. So I can't really like talk or interact with chat too much or anything like that. So I'm not sure that that's too terribly interesting to watch on a live stream, but maybe in little spurts here and there, like, you know, if I don't spend hours streaming that sort of thing, it might be okay. So we'll see how it goes, but you guys can always let me know what you think is interesting and what's not. Um, because I realize, you know, a lot of this model building hobby is kind of uh, repetitive. I wouldn't say boring, but you know, it's maybe not the most exciting thing to watch on a stream. And I want to be conscious of that and not, you know, not be streaming stuff that isn't too terribly interesting, if that makes sense. I guess I need two more poly caps. These should be the last two, I think. So like all of the rest of these here on the runner would have been used for um, the head and torso, right? Cause that's the poly cap runner they, they would have given you with the, um, just the master grade age one Spalo kit when it was just that variant by itself and they would have given you the runners that you also needed to build the, the head and torso along with it so we are going to end up with some leftover poly caps when this is done probably not too terribly useful for you know any future projects or anything like that Just pausing here to make sure that I put these, this knee joint in with these parts in the correct orientation. Yeah, this one doesn't have the unsightly uh, bad nub mark clean up here on the back of the knee. So let's see, the larger ball joint goes up toward the leg and the smaller one goes down toward the foot. Right? Right. All 
All right, let's start this time because I've learned from past mistakes. They weren't really mistakes, but past experience that it would be better to put this hip joint in here first and then we will just attach the leg on from the bottom like so. Nice. That was much easier. All right, let's straighten you out. I didn't mention it in today's stream, but the other thing I really like about how this torso turned out is the uh, the green age logo here that's the shiny green on his chest. Um, the reflectiveness of that and just how it looks with the transparent armor is very cool. I think I think I, I like that's maybe my favorite part of the of the whole build is just that little bit right there. Right? So here he is. He looks good in all blue. Yeah. I like it a lot. All right. I think he has, like I said, one small weapon. And it is... Where in the instructions? Right here. Oh, interesting. In the instructions, it's just labeled as weapon. There you go. Weapon. Usually, they it has some sort of name, right? But it's just this little knife. Um, which weirdly, the hilt of the knife is this transparent white. Maybe I should have painted this. I don't know. I would. I think I'd prefer this in metallic. Um, especially because this little guard here is metallic already. So this goes like that. And then this goes this way. Yeah, I like the clear green and, and the smoke as well. Um, I also like the clear red quite a lot. We didn't we don't get much of it on this variation of the of the Gundam, but yeah, so I don't know what you guys think, but like for me, it would be better if the in this entire part of the knife here was this uh, metallic instead of being the transparent white. I may actually go back and repaint this one, this part as metallic. I just think it would look better. Um, and he can hold this, of course, with uh, the correct fingers, whichever ones they are. Probably these. There's no little tab or anything like that to hold it in place. It just s sort of press fits into the fingers here. But that should work okay. Let's um, put this in his right hand. Yeah, and things like that with like the, you know, wanting the hilt of the knife to be metallic. Those are things I would have noticed if I had um, snap built the kit before painting and I would have just then taken care of it when I was painting it. But again, with this one, because I was trying a different sort of process and not being as um, careful, I would say, with um, figuring things out ahead of time, I figured I'd just do it on the fly. I didn't notice that. And that's fine, you can always go back and fix things like this later on. When it's in his hand, you don't see it as much, but you still see some of that white clear kind of showing through. So yeah, this, I guess for the Spallow version of the Age One, is the only weapons loadout that it has. Um, and like, I mean, if we look at these, these are the arms for the Age One normal, right? Here's the other one. Um, so it has this shield, but it the shield is designed to plug into the back of the arm in this little rectangular uh, opening that they give you. And 
on the Spallow, they covered that up. Like it's underneath there, but it's under these little blue flaps. So there's no way to use the shield with this variation. Um, I suppose you could use the beam rifle. Um, but again, it, in addition to holding in the hand, it plugs into a, a port on the back of the arm as well for extra stability, and that wouldn't exist here. So you could you could like take this bottom part off because this this piece actually does come off, and you could just use the handle, um, and you could handhold it that way, I suppose, if you wanted to. But the way that this guy is supposed to be, I guess, is just holding this knife. This right shoulder, man, it is very annoying that it does not want to be fully seated. Let's fix it once and for all, please. There we go. Okay. I feel better now. All right, so that is it. The, the leftover pieces we have are just these fingers, right? So there's like some regular kind of resting fingers, partially open hand type fingers. And then there's one for the left hand to hold the knife that is equivalent to what we're currently using on the right hand. And then as I pointed out before, we've got the kind of pairs of fingers, pairs of index fingers and pairs of, or I guess, Index finger plus the middle finger next to it, and then ring finger plus the uh, pinky finger next to it. Both extended and curled up, so you can make fists or straight out fingers or some sort of weird combinations of pairs of them. And then we've got my tiny broken piece, which I will fix sometime later today after the stream, and then this part that goes with it that makes up that final flap on the back of the right arm that is currently not there. Um, yeah, other than that, as far as this kit goes, those are the only extra parts. Um, I would imagine that if you built the regular Master Grade Age 1 Spallow, um, it would be the same. I don't think it comes with any different runners or different parts, so those would be the leftover parts you'd have there as well. Yeah. And that would be what it looks like if it was not transparent plastic. I actually like the transparent version of this one quite a lot. So shiny and so uh, the blue is really nice looking transparent blue. Yeah. All right, so what I have over here to my left is um, partially finished red transparent parts for the Age One Titus. Um, the inner frame still needs the detail painting and the top coat and the outer armor parts need to be washed and top coated, but they're all sanded and ready to go. So hopefully between now and next Friday, I can get those parts prepped and ready to go. And we could do this same sort of thing with the age one Titus, which I think is going to be my favorite version. Um, just cause it's so big and chunky and, and it's mostly red. And I've, I really like the red transparent plastic that they used here. So, uh, I think it's going to look really good. So um, next week on Friday, hopefully, about this same time, depending on how my schedule works out, we can we can be back and build that one as well. And then we'll have all three versions um, and I'll do photos, photo shoots. I've already done a photo shoot with the first one. I'll do a photo shoot with, shoot with this one and that one as well. And then um, at least in photos, I can look and compare and decide which one I like the best, even though I can't see all three of them built together at the same time. Um, because they all share the same torso. So um, yeah, anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Um, those of you who hung out the whole time, thanks for, thanks for sticking around. Um, yeah, you can let me know what you think of the build. I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty cool. The, the blue on the torso with the blue on the arms and legs works really well, I think. So yeah, happy with how it turned out. Um, yeah, have a good day, have a good weekend. I will see you guys next time. And uh, Thanks for watching.